Hey everybody, I'm back again with another review, and it's going to be a shorter video today. I've had some long videos lately, and I'd like to reel it back in. I can't believe back in the day I only spent about four minutes reviewing Arsenic and Old Lace, which is one of my favorite movies ever. How did I do that? Anyway, a few months ago, probably more like a year now, I read Wives and Daughters by Elizabeth Gaskell and did a mini review of it. I think it was not a solo review, but part of a group of book reviews. It was my intention to then re-watch this BBC miniseries. It was supposed to happen sooner than this, but um, I kind of forgot until my mom reminded me recently. <laughs> So we rewatched Wives and Daughters! It's a four-episode, five-hour adaptation of the book with a script by Andrew Davies, who does a fine job bringing Gaskell's unfinished work to the screen. I'd seen it a couple times before and liked it, and rewatching it after reading the book, I still liked it, which is a pretty good sign. As far as the storyline goes, I think the synopsis on imdb.com sums it up pretty well. Quote, the daughter of a country doctor copes with an unwanted stepmother, an impetuous stepsister, burdensome secrets, the town gossips, and the tug on her own heartstrings for a man who thinks of her only as a friend. It can be a frustrating story at times, as I think I said when I reviewed the book. Molly Gibson, the main character, has to deal with a lot, and her predicaments are very seldom of her own making. She's a genuinely good, caring, selfless person, though not without her own faults, and many of the things she has to deal with make you say, ugh, that's so unfair. Molly's goodness and selflessness does have a boiling point, though, which makes her refreshingly realistic. She can also be pretty sharp when her patience reaches its limit, and I confess that's refreshing, too. Molly is played by Justine Waddell, who I have enjoyed in every period film I've seen her in, and she was in a lot around this time, but I especially love her in this. She's so sympathetic and natural and relatable. But really, all of the acting is superb, and this miniseries is packed with familiar faces. It's kind of overwhelming how many recognizable people there are. There are people you're bound to know from other period dramas if at any point in your life you made them a regular part of your diet, as well as people who are way more famous now than they were when this was made 20 years ago, like Ian Glenn and Rosamund Pike. One of the few people who I haven't seen in anything else, though, is the actor who plays Roger Hamley. This was apparently Anthony Howell's first film role. He went on to co-star in Foyle's War, which I still haven't watched, but other than that, his career's been pretty quiet, and he doesn't seem to have made the costume drama rounds like so many others. I don't know why not. He was certainly appealing enough here to carry the role of the romantic lead, more appealing than Tom Hollander as the poetic elder brother Osborne, who everyone raves is so much handsomer than Roger. We had to chuckle over that. Hollander does an excellent job as ill-fated Osborne, and he's made up in the Byronic style. But Roger's not the clod some characters make him out to be. He's not as genteel as Osborne, but whatever. He's so clearly the more likable and appealing of the two that when some characters diss him, it's like, what are you talking about? One other thing I observed, there aren't exactly any villains in this story. There's Mr. Preston, I guess he's the biggest antagonist, and he's not likable at all, but I can kind of see where he's coming from and why he's so bitter. His behavior isn't excusable, but it's kind of understandable. There are the gossiping ladies, they do a lot of damage, and sometimes you just can't stand what they're doing, but they're not malevolent. I don't like the new Mrs. Gibson, but though she's irritating, I did feel more sympathetic toward her this time. She's not wicked, she's just a silly, meddlesome woman too concerned with material things and what everyone else thinks. I'm not sure if she's ever truly happy. And her daughter Cynthia isn't bad either, she's just kind of lost. Anyway, I said this was going to be a short review, and I think that's about all I have to say about this. It's a really good mini-series, and I highly recommend it. Oh, and as far as the ending goes, it is a little unusual, but considering that the book just kind of stops at a certain point because Gaskell died before she could complete it, I think they did a pretty good job figuring out a way to tie things up. Alright, if you've seen this one, I'd love to hear what you think of it, so go ahead and leave your thoughts in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed this review, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching!